physicsninja.org. Okay, so today I want to look at, again, ap applying Gauss's law to a spherically symmetric object. And this time I want to consider a uniformly charged sphere. What do I mean by that? So let's draw a sphere. And the total charge of the sphere is going to be Q. Again, the radius here, let's consider a sphere of radius A. And I want to apply Gauss's law to this specific problem. I'm interested in the field inside and outside. And after, we're going to want to plot what the field looks like everywhere in space. So we want to plot the magnitude of the field versus distance from the center of the sphere. Okay, so let's first define what uniformly charged sphere actually means. That means that the charge density is uniform. So the charge density over the entire volume, simply the charge divided by the volume of the sphere. Uh, the volume of the sphere is simply 4 thirds pi, r, uh, pi a cubed. All right, so now we want to apply Gauss's law to this specific case, and let's start with the inside. If I want to apply Gauss's law to the inside, I have to choose a Gaussian surface that is inside. So for the green Gaussian surface, it's going to have a radius r. And let's apply Gauss's law to this surface. So the left-hand side of Gauss's law is always the same for spherically symmetric objects. Okay. We're going to have E multiplied times the surface of this Gaussian surface. The total area is 4 pi r squared. Okay, and that's going to be equal to the amount of charge enclosed by this green surface. How much charge do I have enclosed here? Well, it's going to be the density times the volume. And the volume of this green surface, not the black one, the volume of the green surface is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And to apply Gauss's law, I also have to divide through by epsilon 0. Okay, I could take this one last step. I can substitute in what the charge density is. The charge density is the total charge of the sphere divided by the total volume of the sphere. And at the end, uh, what you do is you'll get Q. Now the 4 thirds pi are going to cancel, or the 4 thirds pi are going to cancel with this one. So this whole factor is going to leave. And I'm going to be left with R cube. I'm going to be left with A cube. And I'm going to be left with epsilon 0. OK. Now I'm just about done. I just have to uh, make some other simplifications. You notice I have an R squared dependence here on the left hand side. I can get rid of that because I have R cube over here. So if I can get rid of two of those, I'm left with a only an R dependence on that side. So if I isolate now, I'm going to find that the field inside inside is simply going to be 1 well qr divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 times a cube there's the expression for the field inside the sphere again that's an interesting result it's linear with the distance from the center of the sphere so if you go ahead and plot the electric field versus distance, you should get just a straight line up until you get to the radius of the sphere, which is A. Once you're outside of this region, well, now we have to consider a different problem. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's apply Gauss's law to the outside. And for the outside, I'll just do it down here. Now the outside is actually pretty easy. Uh, what you have to do is, again, we want to find the field outside, so we have to use a Gaussian surface that is outside or at the point where I want to evaluate it. Again, this is going to have a radius r. 
and let's apply Gauss's law to this specific problem. Uh, the left-hand side of Gauss's law, again, we're dealing with a spherically symmetric object. It's always the same. So we have electric field times the area of our Gaussian surface. That's it. And for this specific case, actually the right-hand side is much easier than when you're inside the sphere. So the right-hand side of Gauss's law, we need to know how much charge is enclosed by this blue sphere. Well, it's the entire object, right? The entire object is located inside that, uh, that shell. Now, therefore, this term is very easy. It's simply the total charge of our sphere. And you have to divide by epsilon zero. So at the end, we get outside, isolate for the electric field. You get a result you've seen many times now. There's the field outside. So what does that look like? That's just Q divided by four pi epsilon zero multiplied times R squared. That looks like the same dependence as our point charge. So when you're outside the sphere, uh, the electric field falls off as one over R squared. And when you're inside the sphere, the electric field is proportional to R. Okay, so applying Gauss's law to spherically symmetric objects is pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask or leave a comment, or it can be reached by email. Thank you. Physics Ninja. Dot org.